Welcome back to Sonic the Hedgehog reads Blue's Clues Sorrow. I'm Sonic the Hedgehog. Now let's continue where we left off, shall we? <clears throat> the episode finally ended as my TV cut to static. I sat still dazed. It took my brain a few minutes to comprehend what I had just watched. I made the decision then and there. I made the decision then and there to play detective and find out what, where in the world this episode came from. I looked up the name of the episode online, but came up with nothing. I knew that the company Viacom owned Blue's Clues because their company name was shown on the factory stickers on the other VHS tapes. After a bit of research, I wrote the letter to the Viacom headquarters. I told them about my experience and asked them if they knew where the tape came from. Two weeks later, I got a reply in the mail. Dear Mr. Name Withheld, thank you for taking the time to write this. Thank you for taking the time to write to us. We were quite surprised by your story about the unaired episode of Blues Clues that you discovered. We are grateful that you contacted us concerning it. We can personally assure you that Viacom Media Networks, as well as Viacom, claims no ownership or liability whatsoever regarding the episode. However, we still need, we still feel that an explanation is in order. Unfortunately, we, we are unable to provide details of the tape's creation, as we simply don't know how this happened. Back in 2002, we received a VHS tape in a package with no return address. The words Mr. Ted were written on the package, along with the tape. There was a letter from Mr. Ted stating that he was the biggest fan of, Blues, of the Blues Clues series and asked for our approval to air his fan-made creation on television. We were, we were quite flattered that a fan would send us a fan-made episode for airing. However, when our editors viewed the episode for refinement, they were quite appalled by its nature. A few of the staff who, t who viewed the episode unbelievably went into shock and had to be transported to the emergency room immediately. Due to the horrifying content, we had absolutely no plans to air this episode. We passed the tape to a private collector, but we were dismayed to discover that he had many copies he made. That he had many copies made. We ask that you please. We ask that you please do not release the contents of the tape or this letter to the public, as we do not want to upset the viewers who love and support our shows for young children. With warm regards, Michael D. Frickless, Executive Vice President, General Counsel, and Secretary. Secretary. Questions bounced around inside my head, and they still do to this day. Who is Mr. Ted? How was he able to create this demonic episode? Is he even, well, human? Out of respect for Viacom, I'm afraid I cannot provide any footage. However, I figured releasing a single screenshot of, and a copy of the letter to, to the public wouldn't make them too angry. They're probably wondering, why are you telling me this? What's the point of this story? To be honest, I just wanted to get it off my chest. I've kept it a secret for a little while, but I eventually felt the desire to tell someone, whether they believe me or not. A part of my brain told me to throw away the tape and the letter, but I have kept both but I kept both of them in my closet to remind me that what I experienced was real. I now realize that some so-called fans of the TV show are not as normal as you might think they are. And that was Blue's Clues No Clue. No, and that was Blue's Clues Sorrow. Uh, Blue's Clues Lost Episode Creepypasta. What do I think of it? Now, this, this creepypasta is much better than the No Clues, than the No Clues episode, which Shadow read a few a few weeks ago and he said it was garbage. Now that I can personally agree with him, but this this episode? Ooh. I thought it was real for a moment. 
In fact, the picture of Steve all in black and crying in white, I thought that Bailey was kind of freaked out about it, and I was kind of freaked out about it too. But I thought the I thought the effect was pretty cool. Now, as for the the paragraph structuring was a uh, Paragraph structuring is really nice, and the sentence structuring was very good too. And uh, for a moment there, I thought that was a real episode. At first, I thought, yeah. Now, okay. In this story. <laughs> now it all have five stages. Now the grieving process have five stages. Yeah, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and, and acceptance. Now, mental illness is not in there, because I'm not very sure. And as for the fact that whether Mr. Ten was human or not, I'm not too sure. But anyway, the author who wrote it, you did an excellent job on this creepypasta. And I feel very honored to read it. Okay, I just want to excuse myself for a minute. Um, I want to explain it to you all. I actually love Blue's Clues. I'll be completely honest with you. But I mostly love Steve. The Steve episodes of Blue's Clues. I thought Joe was, ugh. Not Joe's alright, but he's somewhat of an amateur. If you know what I mean. Now, Bailey actually told me. Now I remember this. A few, a few months ago, Bailey told me that she actually likes Blue's Clues. And we all respect her opinion. In fact, all of us likes Blue's Clues. All of us like Blue's Clues. I'm pretty sure most of you do. If not, then that's okay. None of us is going to be offended in your opinion on this show. So over, overall, the creepypasta... The Blue's Clue Sorrow Creepypasta is freaky, in a good way. Nice job, Arthur. Nice job. Now, what do you all think of this creepypasta? Did you like it or did you not? Feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. <laughs> well, I better get going. I, I got a date with my rose. We're going to go out for lunch. I think we're going to stink and shake. So yeah. Now, thank you all very much for watching. This is Sonic the Hedgehog signing off.